Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, it's my great pleasure to talk with the director of UCI Esports, Mark Deppi. Our topic is UCI Esports, competition, academics, community, and more. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. So I understand that it's UCI Esports' fifth anniversary. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Kind of crazy to think we've been around that long. It's felt like uh, we were brand new this whole time. All right. Well, you know, for those who don't know what UCI stands for, it's University of California, Irvine, correct? Yes. Okay. So I know a lot of people are really interested in your program because it's pretty much uh, the, the first and the one that everyone's been talking about for the five years you've been um, in uh in the esports game. So tell us how it all happened. You know, uh, in 2015, uh, some colleagues and I just saw an opportunity where UCI was uh, thriving in terms of developing this uh, natural uh, community ecosystem. Our club League of Legends team had won back to back to back national titles before national titles existed. Um, we had a great game design program. Esports were still very nascent, but we're kind of projecting this uh, explosive growth. And then other schools had just started offering scholarship programs with Robert Morris University uh, in Chicago, starting the very first one in 2014. So uh, I and uh, some other colleagues just started whispering this idea around campus about uh, what are the chances that a premier research university would tolerate the idea of uh, supporting video games in such a way that we would offer scholarships for young people to compete for us. And uh, obviously, uh, we are successful in uh, launching a program, finding the space, finding the financial support for it, um, and creating a tsunami of uh, kind of political support to make it happen. So that's a really brief story of our genesis. So we uh, began thinking about it in the summer of 2015, and we opened our arena doors uh, fall of 2016, five years ago. All right, so we will learn a little bit more about it with this video, uh, the fifth anniversary video. As we reflect back on the five years of UCI Esports, it's crazy to think how far we've come. In the summer of 2015, this esports journey started with a vision. A vision to figure out what esports at a premier research university could look like. Working with students, staff, faculty, and corporate partners, we built a program that broadly approaches the world of esports through our five pillars of competition, academics and research, community, entertainment, and careers. And over the years, Mark Deppie and his incredible staff have really managed to professionalize this program and really set an example for other schools, not just in the U.S., but across the world to now emulate. You know, one of the great things about having esports on our campus is that it really signals to those of us who love games that we are home here, that this is a space for all of us. I've partnered up with UCI Esports and we've created the first ever Pokey Scholarship which will be awarded every year forever to someone in one of their esports programs. Well, there's no doubt that it changed the collegiate esports community. Um, I think it, uh, it gave notice to all colleges and universities, administrators, faculty members, and students and parents that esports is a real thing. What's easily our fondest memory with working with UCI Esports is literally the opening of the arena. There hasn't been another type of opportunity for us to integrate with any collegiate school on, for the long term. And Esports is open! The UCI Esports dedication to performance and the well-being of their students is something that just perfectly aligns with where Logitech G wants to be. 
The esports program really is just another way for us to support our students. It's just another way for us to make their experience in college that much better and help them get prepared for you know life after college. Whatever their career path, whatever their aspirations, playing competitively or just getting into the industry or moving on to some other industry um, or just being a successful student. All right, that was a great um, anniversary vi video, Mark. And can you tell us a little bit more about the five pillars of UCI esports that you mentioned? Yeah, well, I'll first talk about their importance. And uh, I'll just say that when you're building something new, it's really hard to lock in an identity about what you're trying to achieve. And then once you even understand that, to be able to communicate it to the millions of people you're going to have to talk to on your way. Um, and so our, our pillars really come out of what we think the essence of esports are. Um, I think esports are a combination of competition, the community that plays these games, um, and the entertainment value they provide. That was uh, one of our alumni gave me that, that opinion uh, when we were building our program. And then we're a research university, so uh, we knew we had to align with the academic mission of the university and contribute to the uh, discovery of new knowledge. Um, so we added academics and research. And then after our first year, uh, we just saw so much opportunity to connect our students to internships, to career panels, to uh, full-time jobs. People would just send me requests for, for young talent to come work at their company. And so we added our career pillar after that. But essentially, our five pillars allow us to really lock down what we're going to spend time, energy, and resources on, and then allows us to communicate that easily to the broader world. And, you know, I noticed that you're using the background for the use. UCI Esports Conference of 2021. I understand that that was just days ago. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, we just hosted our fourth annual research conference. Um, as I mentioned, we certainly want to align with the academic mission of the university. Um, and we initially started with a symposium our very first year of existence. And then for the last four years, I've thrown a peer reviewed academic conference so people can submit proposals to talk on one of our three tracks, uh, either peer-reviewed academic research, uh, collegiate esports, or scholastic esports. And so uh, I think we had 300 registrants this year. It was virtual for the second year in a row. And it's a really awesome community of people who are trying to connect the dots between education, young people, their interests, uh, and this thing we, we have come to call esports. And so i um, really proud of that effort. It's a humongous lift for, for our staff and team. But every year when we finish it up, we're just so proud that we were a part of it. Okay, so getting to the competition part of it, um, what uh, teams do you have? So right now, uh, for most of our history, we've had League of Legends and Overwatch uh, uh, varsity teams for both of those games. Um, we did have a, a donor one year that uh, wanted to fund a Super Smash Ultimate team. So we've had uh, one, one year of Smash Ultimate um, but we are really focused on League of Legends and Overwatch now. Uh, we have excellent coaches, a long history of success in those games, and uh, really optimistic for the uh, really great talent that we have this year. So those are the games we play. There's a lot of interest in other games out there. Uh, I get a lot of emails about when you're going to start a team for X, Y, or Z. Um, and uh, uh, ideally, when we have more resources and we can grow a little bit, we certainly will. Sure. And you've actually had uh, your teams have had some great success and won championships. Is that right? Yeah. And we could count championships that we were kind of adjacent to. We won the 2018 League of Legends championship. That was certainly our biggest uh, winning highlight. Uh, our Overwatch team went to um, the Fiesta Bowl and was a, the semi, uh, a finalist that year. Um, we've had a lot of club teams win championships. Um, whether that be in World of Warcraft or Super Smash Brothers. Um, we, we don't really take credit for their success, um, but our club teams are, are elite as well. So even if you're not one of our varsity team members, uh, there's still a great opportunity to compete uh, at an elite collegiate level at uh, UCI. So how do you recruit uh, those people who may be interested in uh, being on a team? Well, identifying people who are both really excellent students and elite gamers is quite the challenge. And essentially, they have to uh, reveal themselves to us. So uh, we have coaches in the scene. We have a, a public discord. We have a recruiting forum on our website. Um, I would say oftentimes people will reach out to one of our players or one of our coaches uh, just through a, a direct message or a discord. 
um, and just get to know a little bit about us. So there's a lot of different ways that we find talent. Um, but like I said, it's a really high bar to find someone that's got near straight A's in high school, but has also played thousands of hours of video games. Uh, those two don't always go hand in hand, as you may not, as you may, uh, as you may appreciate. And so I understand you also have intramurals, is that right? Yes, uh, we, we've participated and helped lead some intramurals over the years. Um, when COVID hit, we really invested a lot into it because we had all the infrastructure set up. We had the shoutcasters, the tournament organizers. So we worked with our uh, um, recreation department to unroll or to roll out some intramural. I think we had seven or eight games, uh, including League and Overwatch, a uh, game I play Magic, the Gathering Arena. Um, and then we even had a, uh, uh, a word game for faculty and staff. And so, um, yeah, we, we've done esports uh, intramurals over the years. Right now, recreation is kind of running it, and they're more focused on kind of the sports titles like uh, FIFA and, and NFL uh, Madden. Terrific. And so do you have camps as well? Yeah, we, we stay pretty busy. Uh, over the summer, we've thrown summer camps every year. Uh, we started in 2016 or 2017, excuse me, with our first uh, camp uh, for girls in gaming. Um, we really wanted to, A, uh, make it very well known that we want to create a, a place that's welcoming for young girls and create a, uh, a pipeline of people interested in games that, uh, that we could engage with. So um, we started with girls in gaming that year. We've run boot camps. We've run outreach camps. We have all kinds of different things we've done over the years. Um, but yeah, summer camps are, are something that a lot of people would really like and look forward to on a college campus and allows uh, young uh, parents to find something awesome for their, their children to do over the summer that both uh, the parents can support because it's at a university like UCI and uh, the high school or middle school or loves because it's got video games related to it. All right. So what's the, the history of your arena? Uh, that's a pretty big project. Tell us about that. Well, our space, I'll say, we uh, we didn't know how important it was till after it was built. Um, uh, I think we we knew we needed a space for our teams to play. We wanted to have uh, an income source to offset the cost of our program. Uh, so we built it as a small business that could host tournaments and events and just uh, mm -hmm. uh, recreational gaming. Um, but we didn't understand was that every university was going to think they needed one after we built it. Um, so some, some people have facilities that kind of are just for the varsity team. Our space is open to the public. And so uh, it's really become a home base for gamers. Um, uh, yeah, you can see some of the new PCs that we have in there. Uh, we've just recently de-densified it to kind of make it a little nicer experience and make people feel a little bit safer uh, sitting next to each other uh, given the pandemic. But um, yeah, we, we built it for all those reasons to have a, uh, to have a home, to make a, make, to create a revenue stream. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't appreciate the impact of it until everyone else decided they needed one as well. <laughs> so are there, um, is it widely used by other people in the community? Yeah, we, uh, before COVID, we estimated we'd had about 170,000 visitors, uh, in our three and a half years pre COVID. So it is a one of the most uh, heavily walked places on campus. Um, I think uh, we uh, when you look at credit card transactions, we're in the top seven departments on credit card transactions uh, on campus. You think of dining, you think about uh, arts, you think about uh, major facilities and esports. This 3,500 square foot space uh, was in the top ten in terms of. Um, number of people making transactions. So uh, it is a heavily used space. Uh, if you walk by, you'll see fingerprints all over the windows because even when we're not open, people are trying to look in and uh, scuffing up our windows. So it's a very popular space. Um, we just had a reopening uh, a couple weeks ago for our fifth anniversary. And we had a line about 300 yards long that lasted for a couple hours as people were coming in to see the space. So we know there's a big appetite to get back in there. All right. So what is a big lesson you've learned in your five years about uh, developing this program? You know, people ask me, like, what, what advice would you give to someone who's starting the new program? Uh, one of the most common ones, uh, I'll give a couple. One, one is uh, to work with faculty at your university. Um, 
If you're, if you're not familiar with the college environment, faculty are major stakeholders in the governance of universities. And even though there's a lot of faculty supporters, we've had them involved uh, since every step of the way. Um, I think they've also been our most vocal critics. And so really trying to make them feel like a part of the process uh, is a high recommendation. We now have a faculty advisory committee, which uh, has been a great sounding board. Um, the other one is to be really thoughtful uh, in terms of who you're hiring to coach your teams. Um, initially, we thought anyone with a subject matter expert who understands the game at a high level is just, just fine. Um, it's way more important, in my opinion, that they are uh, a good leader, um, they are a good role model, they understand how to motivate people, they understand how to deal with conflict. Um, it, it is a, a lot of work to manage a group of young people, especially if they haven't had team experience before. So understanding the qualities that you should look for in a great coach uh, are another thing that I've learned. How important do you think physical training is for esports athletes? No, I think uh, everyone should know, yeah, that that physical movement, getting blood going, cardiovascular health, um, understanding uh, proper ergonomics and posture, those are really essential for pretty much everything. Um, and so it's no, it's no different in esports. Um, we were very fortunate to have Halish Patel, our, our exercise physiologist, uh, express interest in helping to develop a health and wellness program for our, our, our program. Uh, uh, right, I guess, at the get-go, our first year, and uh, it's been expanded uh, ever since, um, and now every one of our athletes is able to have one-on-one -on -one personal training. We do fitness testing. Uh, we track their progress over the quarter, um, and so they have really great access to workouts and guidance. Um, we talk about nutrition and sleep and mental health, and so, yeah, it's it's been really wonderful to have someone really intentionally focused on health because I think everyone's concerned about how much time people spend in front of computers and the sedentary nature of uh, gaming. And so when we can uh, both show that we're getting outside and, uh, I guess, reap the benefits of it, uh, it, it certainly is a strength for our program. So does UCI esports value uh, diversity and inclusion? No, I think... Uh, any, any public university uh, has a very public facing statement and stance on trying to be a, a welcoming inclusive space for, for all people. Um, Esports at UCI is no different. Um, one of the videos mentioned that we do have a, a, a 15 page diversity plan uh, that a task force put together several years ago uh, on our website. You can go look at it right now. Um, we've done everything in that, in that list of recommendations. Um, uh, I will say the challenge is uh, we haven't felt the the impact that we were hoping to have. And so um, you still don't see the entire gaming community reflected when you look at the, the top esports stages. Um, you certainly see women and underrepresented uh, minorities um, in and around esports programs. Um, but uh, but I, I think we still have a lot of work to do. Um, there's a lot of people talking about it. Um, but I, I will say it's one of my big frustrations over the five years we've been doing this is that the needle hasn't really moved. Um, we don't really have levers to pull uh, to, to make it move. So, um, yes, it is both something we highly value uh, and also aspire to do much better than we have so far. And b besides that challenge, uh, what other uh, challenges have been uh, big for you? Uh, I will I will say, you know, it's just nascent. We're early in our in the the history of college esports. Uh, I will say everything feels new every year. Like we we reinvent the wheel very often. Um, so that's one kind of personal challenge at UCI and our program. Uh, the other thing I think that's maybe one of the biggest issues for college esports is um, a lot of people are trying to influence the direction of where college esports heads. Uh, and the the group that's not exerting its influence the way it should is really higher education. Um, I really strongly believe that colleges really need to set standards and create guidelines and eligibility rules um, uh, and level the playing field. It is kind of the wild, wild west. We talk about that a lot. Um, and I would love to see schools really make sure their voice is heard because uh, right now, like I said, there's kind of like a gold rush or uh, a rush to implement different things or, or um, gobble up uh, kind of just just all the air in the room. And so uh, I'm a little nervous if, if schools can't get organized that uh, that'll continue to happen. And I understand you also have a position with NASEF. Is that right? 
Yeah, I, I helped uh, NASEF kind of launch many years ago, um, and I've been honored to serve as commissioner for the last few years. Um, it was funded through the Samueli Foundation, one of UCI's uh, biggest donors, and so we're interested and have a long history of kind of investing in STEM education. They saw some clear overlap in esports and STEM, uh, and so we initially piloted an Orange County High School esports league uh, in 2016 or I think 2017, uh, and we expanded it to North America wide the following year. Uh, and then it's kind of uh, been up and running for several years. And yes, I'm still the commissioner of it, and uh, excited to see where it goes from here. All right. So, what do you think the future? of esports is? You know, I talk about esports as the future of competition. I really think if you look at how society is evolving, we're meeting people online. I met my wife through a dating app. We buy everything online. Um, we're not, we're not, I don't know. I don't see it going the back to back to retail or, or in-person experiences. I, I know we will always seek in-person engagement, but I, I just think we will always use technology uh, as, as we think about competition and especially intercollegiate competition. I, it, it's hard for me to imagine us banging our, our heads together playing football in 100 years from now. I just think that's, that's not the direction that society's headed. So when I talk about esports, I really think it is, represents uh, how we're going to compete in the future. And so that's why it's worth paying attention to. Sure. And so how did um, UCI esports adapt to the pandemic? Well, UCI, like many schools, shut our doors in March of 2020 and uh, didn't reopen them for a long time. So uh, we weren't really encouraged to come back until this summer. So um, it was nice that uh, because we do compete in a digital environment, we are able to compete and practice online. But with our facility, our fitness program and all the staffing we have, we really lost the ability for a lot of that to make an impact the way we want it to. So um, yeah, I, I mean, we retreated to our, our homes, offices, and our home PCs. We sent gear home with students that needed uh, better better equipment, um, but uh, it, was, it was certainly a struggle uh, psychologically and just, just structurally, so uh, I could not be more excited to be back. It was a little weird coming back. Uh, our, our arena officially opens to the public on Monday. Um, and we just can't be more excited to, to see each other face-to-face -face and re-engage. All right, that's fantastic. and. So, um, you know, Mark, I'm going to give you the last word. And so could you let us know how uh, people who are interested can find you and uh, any last comments or thoughts that you want to give us? Yeah, well, we'd love for people to engage with us. We have a public discord. You can find uh, our website is esports.uci.edu. Um, uh, you can find us there. Uh, if you're interested in our conference, you can check it out. Uh, just Google UCI Esports Conference. Um, I'm at UCI Kaboom on Twitter. All our social media handles for the campus are at UCI Esports. Um, and I'll also make a shameless plug. Uh, we are hiring an arena coordinator. So we're ha we've had a lot of turnover in the last year. And uh, we are really right now staffing back up. And so uh, we're going to have an arena coordinator position open right now and then several other jobs coming in the next six months. So uh, hopefully folks uh, keep an eye out for those. All right. Terrific, Mark. It was terrific having you on um, our show. And so um, the best of luck to you, you and your program. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Uzer Hassan of Esports How. See you then.